Amazingly, the whole history of Israel in the Old Testament is a complete prefigurement for the entire history of the Catholic Church, right up to our present day, in great detail and in chronological order. For a short 9-minute summary video that demonstrates this amazing act of God, watch this video. For a deeper look into these parallels, see our YouTube channel, Maccabean Uprising, and also visit our webpage at www.maccabeanuprising.com. Before we examine the Whore of Babylon found in the 17th chapter of the Book of the Apocalypse, I would like to offer an idea. The Old Testament contains the entire history of the Israelites. The Israelites were the Old Testament people of God. Their entire history from start to finish is completely contained in the Old Testament. Similarly, the New Testament is the entire history of the new people of God, the Catholic Church. We are still in the New Testament, even though our history is not recorded entirely in the Bible. If the old prefigures the new, then it makes sense that the entire history of the Catholic Church would be prefigured by the Old Testament. Would this prefigurement continue all the way to the end of church history? Elevated to the papacy, Angelo Giuseppe Cardinal Roncalli. He will reign as Pope John the 23rd. This video will build on our previous video, Beast Out of the Sea, from the Book of the Apocalypse, Chapter 17, which in turn was built upon a previous video entitled, Prophecy of the Seventy Weeks of Years, from the Book of Daniel. That work was based on our pivotal video, Vatican II and Novus Ordo, prefigured in the Old Testament. The central concept and the keystone on which we will base our conclusions is the understanding that the abomination of desolation in the books of the Maccabees is a prefigurement for the Novus Ordo Rite. To see how the abomination of desolation is a prefigurement of the Novus Ordo, refer to our full-length video, Vatican II and Novus Ordo, prefigured in the Old Testament. Or, refer to our video, Vatican II and Novus Ordo, prefigured by the books of the Maccabees, a short summary. The Maccabean Uprising Project is dedicated to showing how the entire history of Israel in the Old Testament is a chronological and detailed prefigurement of the history of the Catholic Church, all the way up to our present day. If this is true, then these parallels can be very useful and instructive for us. In our previous videos, we used the parallels between Novus Ordo and the Abomination of Desolation from the Old Testament books of the Maccabees in order to shed light on the prophecy of the 70 weeks of years found in the book of Daniel, which in turn sheds light on the seven-headed beast out of the sea from the 17th chapter of the book of the Apocalypse. If you haven't already done so, we highly recommend you watch our video, Prophecy of the Seventy Weeks of Years, then watch our video, Beast Out of the Sea, from the 17th chapter of the Book of the Apocalypse, before you continue with this video. From the foundation laid in those videos, we can move on to see how the Whore of Babylon from the 17th chapter of the Book of the Apocalypse can be understood using the identification of the seven-headed beast out of the sea and how he gained power over God's people. In this video, we will identify the Whore of Babylon, show how she is dressed in scarlet and purple, 
show how she has a cup in her hands, how she rides the beast out of the sea, how she is drunk on the blood of the saints, and how she makes the nations drink of her cup, and how she commits her fornication. Like the prophecies found in the book of Daniel, the visions of St. John in the book of the Apocalypse very likely have multiple meanings as well. One of the most common understandings of the symbolisms in the book of the Apocalypse is how they relate to the end of the world and the final passion of the Catholic Church. Traditional Catholics use the name Book of the Apocalypse. Another name for this book is the Book of Revelation. Here is a very basic and general description of the concept of Apocalypse from Wikipedia. An apocalypse, literally meaning an uncovering, is a disclosure of knowledge or revelation. In religious contexts, it is usually a disclosure of something hidden, a vision of heavenly secrets that can make sense of earthly realities. In the book of Revelation, the last book of the New Testament, the revelation which John receives is that of the ultimate victory of good over evil at the end of the present age. The text containing the Whore of Babylon is found in the 17th chapter of the Book of the Apocalypse. The following verses from the Book of the Apocalypse are taken from the Dewey Reams Bible. And there came one of the seven angels, who had the seven vials, and spoke with me, saying, Come, I will show thee the condemnation of the great harlot, who sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and they who inhabit the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her whoredom. And he took me away in spirit into the desert, and I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet-covered beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was, was clothed round about with purple and scarlet, and gilt with gold, and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of the abomination and filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of the fornications and the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And I wondered when I had seen her with great admiration. And the angel said to me, Why dost thou wonder? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast which carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast which thou sawest was, and is not, and shall come up out of the bottomless pit, and go into destruction. And the inhabitants of the earth, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, shall wonder, seeing the beast that was, and is not. And here is the understanding that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains, upon which the woman sitteth, and they are seven kings. Five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he is come, he must remain a short time. And the beast, which was and is not, the same also is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into destruction. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, who have not yet received a kingdom, but shall receive power as kings one hour after the beast. These have one design, and their strength and power they shall deliver to the beast. These shall fight with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, because he is lord of lords and king of kings. And they that are with him are, are called and elect and faithful, and he said to me, The waters which thou sawest, or the harlot sitteth, are peoples and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest in the beast, these shall hate the harlot, and make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. 
For God hath given into their hearts to do that which pleaseth him, that they give their kingdom to the beast, till the words of God be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is the great city, which hath kingdom over the kings of the earth. There are many vivid descriptions of the Hora Babylon that are given in the scriptural text. The Hora Babylon sits on many waters, which we are told are peoples, nations, and tongues. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with the Hora Babylon, and the earth is drunk from the wine of her whoredom. The Hora Babylon was seen by St. John when he was taken into the desert. She is dressed in scarlet and purple, adorned with jewels, and has a cup in her hands. She is drunk with the blood of martyrs and saints. The ten horns of the seven-headed beast will hate the harlot and make her desolate, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. And the harlot is the great city, which is given kingdom of the kings of the earth. And finally, a very telling characteristic of her is that she is sitting on top of the seven-headed beast out of the sea. This beast can be identified as the new pagan Roman Empire, the European Union, which came out of the sea during the reign of the sixth king. When five kings were fallen, one is and one will be. The European Union was officially formed in 1993 with a Maastricht Treaty. This occurred during the reign of John Paul II, the sixth king of Vatican City. See our video, Beast Out of the Sea, for more details. It seems certain that the Book of the Apocalypse uses a broad range of metaphors. By examining the metaphorical terms in the Book of the Apocalypse, we can gain greater insight. In our last video, we identified a likely hypothesis for the meanings of the terms earth and sea as used in the book of the apocalypse. The sea can be understood as the Gentile secular nations of the world, and by contrast the earth would then be seen as God's nation. Here is a relevant clip from our last video that gives this interpretation. Two very important images are those of the sea and of the earth. In chapter 13 of the book of the Apocalypse, the seven-headed beast, which we have identified as the European Union, comes out of the sea. However, the third and final beast, the two-horned lamb, is said to come out of the earth. Here is a passage from the book of Daniel that gives us a very good clue as to what is signified by the sea. From the book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 2 and 3. I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea, and four great beasts, different one from another, came up out of the sea. Of course, these two verses refer to the four great pagan empires that would rule over God's people before the first coming of Christ. These four empires are identified in the book of Daniel as the Babylonian, Persian, Greek, and Roman empires. That all four beasts came out of the sea, and that all four beasts were Gentile peoples, then it stands to reason that one possible meaning for the sea could be the Gentile nations. The idea that the sea is a metaphor for the Gentile nations is supported by the text in the book of the Apocalypse, chapter 21, verse 1, which states, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth was gone, and the sea was no more. After the end of the world, the sea would be no more because only God's people will be in heaven not the secular people of the world, or in other words, not the Gentile nations. Therefore, it stands to reason that if the sea is the Gentile nations, then the earth 
would be a symbol or metaphor for God's people and his nation. In the Old Testament, that would be the people of Israel. And in the New Testament, the earth would be Catholics, led by the nation of Vatican City. If we apply these interpretations of the sea and earth, Thus, when we read verse 18, we can gain a better understanding of what the whore of Babylon is. And the woman which thou sawest is the great city, which hath kingdom over the kings of the earth. If the earth is a metaphor for God's nation, and the woman is the great city which hath kingdom over the kings of the earth, then it stands to reason that the woman is the city of Rome, and by extension, all those in communion with Rome. For only in Rome do the kings of God's nation, namely the seven kings of Vatican City, find their kingdom. This interpretation is supported even further when we consider that the whore of Babylon sat on top of the seven-headed beast. We are told that the seven heads are seven mountains, and they are seven kings. Rome is the city of seven hills, and those seven kings can be shown to be the seven kings of Vatican City, up until the resignation of Benedict XVI. When we consider that St. John saw the whore of Babylon in the desert, then further confirmation is given that the whore of Babylon is Rome. If you notice in the verses concerning the whore of Babylon that the word woman is used several times to refer to her. In chapter 12, verse 14 of the book of the Apocalypse, there is a passage that describes a woman who was given two eagle's wings so she could escape the persecution of the dragon. The woman flew into the desert with the eagle's wings, where she was fed by God for a time, times, and a half time. This woman is widely seen as being a symbol for the church. But I think we can be more precise and say that this woman is a symbol for the church in Rome. The fact that the woman was fed for a time, times, and a half time, as shown in our video, Beast Out of the Sea, See the 12 minute, 30 second minute mark. This implies that she will not be fed for the remaining half of the week. It is in the remaining half of the week that the beast gains power over God's people. Thus, it appears that the woman who fled to the desert in the Apocalypse chapter 12, verse 14, is the same woman that is now the whore of Babylon that St. John sees in the desert in chapter 17, verse 3. This woman is the city of Rome. The great harlot sits on many waters. Those waters are said to be many peoples, nations, and tongues, which is a fitting description of the reach of the Novus Ordo Church in Rome which is truly an international organization, reaching practically into every country in the entire world. The kings of the earth, namely the kings of Vatican City, have committed fornication with the whore of Babylon. Throughout the Bible, fornication is used as a metaphor for the infidelity of God's people who break their covenant with God and seek security with worldly powers or with pagan gods. Here are some passages that illustrate this metaphor. From the book of Hosea chapter 2. Judge your mother, judge her, because she is not my wife, and I am not her husband. Let her put away her fornications from her face, and her adulteries from between her breasts, lest I strip her naked and set her as in the day that she was born. And I will make her as a wilderness, and will, will set her as a land that none can pass through, and will kill her with drought. And I will not have mercy on her children, for they are the children of fornications. From the book of Ezekiel chapter 16, 
And thou hast taken thy sons and thy daughters, whom thou hast borne to me, and hast sacrificed the same to them to be devoured. Is thy, is thy fornication small? Thou hast sacrificed and given my children to them, consecrating them by fire. And after all thy abominations and fornications, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, when thou wast naked and full of confusion, trodden underfoot in thy own blood. And it came to pass, after all thy wickedness, Woe, woe to thee, saith the Lord God, that thou didst also build thee a common stew, and made thee a brothel house in every street. At every head of the way thou hast set up a sign of thy prostitution, and hath made thy beauty to be an abominable to be abominable, and hast prostituted thyself to every one that passed by, and hast multiplied thy fornications. And thou hast committed fornication with the Egyptians thy neighbors, men of large bodies, and hast multiplied thy fornications to provoke me. Behold, I will stretch out my hand upon thee, and will take away thy justification, and I will deliver thee up to the will of the daughters of the Philistines that hate thee, that are ashamed of thy wicked way. Thou hast also committed fornication with the Assyrians, because thou wast not yet satisfied. And after thou hast played the harlot with them, even so thou wast not contented. Thou hast also multiplied thy fornications in the land of Canaan with the Chaldeans, and neither so wast thou satisfied. Wherein shall I cleanse thy heart, saith the Lord God? seeing thou dost all these the works of a shameless prostitute? The kings of Vatican City have committed spiritual fornication on countless occasions. This was done when Paul VI addressed the United Nations in 1965 and said, People turn to the United Nations as if it were their last hope for peace and harmony. We presume to bring here the tri their tribute of honor and of hope along with our own. Or, when John Paul II made the following appeal on January 1, 2004. More than ever, we need a new international order that draws on the experience and results achieved in these years by the United Nations. Or when Benedict XVI said the following on April 18, 2008, in front of the General Assembly of the United Nations. My presence in this assembly is a sign of esteem for the United Nations, and it is intended to express the hope that the organization will increasingly serve as a sign of unity between states and an instrument of service to the entire human family. But the kings of Vatican City also committed spiritual fornication through their recognizing and praising of false man-made religions. The most infamous of these events is the, quote, World Day of Prayer of John Paul II. On this day, he called together dozens of leaders from the world's religions to offer common prayer to their gods. In doing so, he affirmed the whole world and their false religions, and gave exceedingly great scandal to all those in the Novus Ordo who admire him for his alleged holiness. There are countless other instances of spiritual fornication. However, we don't want to unnecessarily extend the length of this video. Links will be provided in the description section of this video with more examples. Not only did the kings commit fornication, but all the nations have drunk from the whore's chalice. These evils have been multiplied all throughout the Novus Ordo, in countless inter-religious services, sex abuse cover-ups, and all manner of scandals and intrigues. Truly, the cup of the whore of Babylon is full of abominations, fornications, and filth. She is drunk with the blood of the martyrs and saints, because the Novus Ordo does pay lip service to true Catholic martyrs and saints. All the while, 
acting in ways contrary to the lives of those saints. The saints and martyrs are thus mocked by the whore of Babylon. The whore of Babylon is clothed in purple and scarlet, which are the colors of cardinals and bishops. She is gilt with gold and jewels, which describes all the buildings, institutions, and ceremonies of the Novus Ordo. Protestants have long used the text of chapter 17 to identify the Roman Catholic Church as the Whore of Babylon. Protestants have seen the verses concerning the Whore's global reach, her adornment with jewels and gold, wearing scarlet and purple, and her identification of a great city sitting on seven hills as the perfect fit for Rome. Because of their inherent anti-Catholic prejudice, this conclusion is somewhat inescapable for them. However, Catholics have always known that the Catholic Church, led by Rome, is the Bride of Christ. The Bride of Christ cannot be the Whore of Babylon. Traditional Catholics have witnessed the incredible apostasy of the Novus Ordo Church in Rome ever since Vatican II. Although almost all Protestants don't see the distinction between the Catholic Church in Rome prior to Vatican II and the Novus Ordo Church afterwards, this distinction is not lost on traditional Catholics. Thus, Protestants mistakenly identify the Whore of Babylon as the Catholic Church. But traditional Catholics know the Catholic faith no longer resides in Rome. The Whore of Babylon is the Novus Ordo sect that has taken over Rome, her buildings, her institutions, her adornments, and her hierarchy. This is why the woman was protected and fed by God in the desert for the first half of the final week. And then later, in the desert, St. John saw the woman, but this time, it was the Whore of Babylon. Amazingly, the Whore of Babylon, as identified as Novus Ordo Rome, is prefigured in the Old Testament. Our YouTube channel is dedicated to demonstrating the entire history of Israel in the Old Testament as a complete prefigurement for the entire history of the Catholic Church, event for event and in the same chronological order. When we look at the very end of the Old Testament, we see that the Temple of the Jews was taken over by the Greek King Antiochus IV. His actions in the Temple and the response of the faithful Jews in the Old Testament can all be shown to be a striking parallel for the events surrounding Vatican II and Novus Ordo. In the books of the Maccabees, Antiochus drove faithful Jews in Jerusalem into submission and apostasy. Faithful Jews were forced to escape the city and flee to the mountains. In the city of Jerusalem, there was no longer anyone who professed and practiced the true Jewish religion. Thus, at the end of the Old Testament, Jerusalem lost the Jewish faith and became the seat of Antiochus, the prefigurement of the Antichrist. Our Lady of La Salette said that Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. The parallel is perfect. Therefore, by use of the complete parallel of Old Testament Israelite history and Catholic history, we can see that in the end days, the Catholic faith and the remnant of the Catholic Church will be driven out of Rome and into the mountains as well. This is literally what happened when Archbishop Lefebvre kept the traditional Catholic faith alive in the Alps of Switzerland. Incredibly, in the Old Testament, God allowed his holy city of Jerusalem 
to lose the faith and go into apostasy. So we can see by means of parallel that Rome has done the same thing. Therefore, it is much easier to see and accept that God has allowed Rome to apostatize. Apostate Rome is the whore of Babylon. Can the whore also be the bride of Christ? I think that this is impossible. In the text of chapter 17, there are interesting verses concerning the ten horns of the beast out of the sea. And the beast which was and is not, the same also is the eighth king, and is of the seven, and goeth into destruction. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, who have not yet received a kingdom, but shall receive power as kings one hour after the beast. They have one design, and their strength and power they shall deliver to the beast. And the ten horns which thou sawest in the beast, these shall hate the harlot, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and shall burn her with fire. For God hath given into their hearts to do that which pleaseth him, that they give their kingdom to the beast, till the words of God be fulfilled. We have shown in our material that the four pagan empires that ruled over Jerusalem and God's people at the end of the Old Testament have direct parallels for the four secular empires that rule over the city of Rome and God's people in the history of the Catholic Church. Please see our previous videos for a detailed examination of these parallels. And from these parallels, it is very clear to see that the European Union is paralleled by the Roman Empire that ruled over Jerusalem shortly before the first coming of Christ. Considering the seven-headed beast and the identification of its seven heads as seven kings of Vatican City, we can then see who is referred to as the eighth king, who is the same as the beast that was and is not, and is also of the seven. Francis is the eighth, for he comes after Benedict, who was the seventh. When we consider the prophecy of St. Malachi and his famous prophecy of popes and anti-popes up until the end of the world, the last name on his prophetical list is Peter the Roman, who corresponds with Francis. If Francis is Peter the Roman and the EU is the new pagan Roman Empire, then we can more clearly understand the verse that states, And the beast which was and is not the same also is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into destruction. More will be said about this later in this video. Considering the ten horns of the beast who will receive power one hour after the beast, consider the following. Francis was elected on May 13, 2013. Exactly one month later, on April 13th, Francis announced the creation of a special group of advisors, which came to be known as the Gang of Nine. These nine cardinal advisors, along with one Novus Ordo bishop, form a new group of ten. These ten receive their power and authority exactly one hour, or one month, after the election of Francis. They all have one design and they all work in concert with each other. Their mission is to radically change the Novus Ordo and have been the special and close advisors of Francis who has been destroying the Novus Ordo. Thus, just as Rome destroyed Jerusalem in 70 AD, so too will Peter the Roman and his 10 advisors destroy the Novus Ordo in Rome. Again, much more will be said about this later in this video. From Wikipedia, the Council of Cardinal Advisors, formerly the Council of Cardinals, C9, 
is a group of nine Catholic cardinals appointed by Pope Francis to serve as his advisors. Announced April 13, 2013, one month after his election, it was formally established the 28th of September the same year. The council consists of nine cardinals plus Marcello Semerero, who is a bishop rather than a cardinal and who serves as secretary for the group. The complete prefigurement of the church's history by the entire history of Israel in the Old Testament, even in the same chronological order, is a tremendous tool and compass for us to see events in church history in their proper context. In these parallels, we can see that the Babylonian exile of the Jews is a prefigurement of the spoliation of the papal states in 1870. In the Old Testament, the Jews had their land taken and they were brought into exile into Babylon. In the history of the church, the church had her land taken from her, but unlike the Old Testament where the Jews were brought into Babylon, in church history, Babylon was instead brought to the church. The city of Rome, which was under the control of the church since the early days of the church, was now under the control of Freemasonic and secular governments, after the spoliation of the Papal States in 1870. Great evils, which once were kept out of Rome, as well as other religions, were brought into Rome after the spoliation of the Papal States in 1870. The city of Rome became like the ancient city of Babylon, a city of pagans, immoral practices, and foreign religions. There in the midst of Babylon were God's people, kept there against their will. Thus we can see that Rome became like Babylon all the way back in 1870. This is additional confirmation that the city of Rome can be seen as Babylon and the Novus Ordo sect as the whore of Babylon. In the Old Testament, the city of Babylon fell to the Persians. King Cyrus the Great conquered Babylon in 539 BC. The fall of Babylon occurred very suddenly, and it shocked and surprised the Babylonians, who thought they were very safe behind their massive walls. The way Cyrus was able to conquer the city of Babylon so quickly was by diverting the flow of the Euphrates River, which lowered the water level to a point where Persian troops were able to walk along the Euphrates riverbed by night, directly into the city. They caught the Babylonians completely by surprise. From Wikipedia, the fall of Babylon denotes the end of the Neo-Babylonian Empire after it was conquered by the Achaemenid Empire in 539 BC. Nabonidus, son of Assyrian priestess Abagupi, came to the throne in 556 BC after overthrowing the young king Labashi Marduk. A number of factors arose which would ultimately lead to the fall of Babylon. The population of Babylonia became restive and increasingly disaffected under Nabonidus. The Marduk priesthood hated Nabonidus because of his suppression of Marduk's cult and his elevation of the cult of the moon god Sin. He excited a strong feeling against himself. In Cyropedia, Xenophon, in agreement with Herodotus, says that the combined Med Median and Persian army entered the city via the channel of the Euphrates River, the river having been diverted into trenches that Cyrus had dug for the invasion, and that the city was unprepared because of the great festival that was being observed. Thus, there are many points of parallel between the fall of Babylon and the fall of the Whore of Babylon in the New Testament. The fall of Babylon was done very quickly and by surprise. Cyrus, who was a king from the east, from Persia, dried up the Euphrates River so he could enter into the city by surprise. Then in the book of the Apocalypse, we read the following in chapter 16, verse 12. 
And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and dried up the water thereof, that a way might be prepared for the kings from the rising of the sun. The rising of the sun occurs in the east. Also, we read that the whore of Babylon will fall very quickly and suddenly, just like the fall of Babylon. We read the following in the, in the book of the Apocalypse, chapter 18, verses 9 and 10. And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and lived in delicacies with her, shall weep and bewail themselves over her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for fear of her torments, saying, Alas, alas, the great city of Babylon, that, might, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. God's people were held captive in Babylon as the fall of Babylon occurred at the very end of the Babylonian captivity. And in the book of the Apocalypse, chapter 18, verse 4, we read the following concerning the whore of Babylon and God's people. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Go out from her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Thus, in both instances, God's people are held up in the great city, and God wants them out. Events in Babylon, right before its fall, are very similar to events occurring right now in the Novus Ordo, the Whore of Babylon. Nabonidus was the last king of Babylon, and he was very unpopular. He downplayed and suppressed their great god Marduk, and instead promoted his own favorite god. This is very similar to how Francis is very unpopular among those of Novus Ordo conservatives. He downplays and undermines the initiatives and memory of John Paul II, the great icon of Novus Ordo, and instead promotes his own agenda. Francis excites strong feelings against himself. Let us recall again the chronological parallels between the history of the Church and the history of Israel in the Old Testament. The end of the Old Testament saw four empires rule in succession over God's people and God's holy city. Please see our material for a more detailed demonstration of these amazing parallels. But here is a short summary. The Babylonians were the first empire. They invaded Jerusalem, took the Jews' land, and brought the Jews into Babylon in exile. This occurred in history of the church when the Italian government invaded Rome in 1870, took the papal states, and the popes became prisoners in the Vatican. After 70 years in exile, the Persians, led by Cyrus the Great, conquered Babylon and let the Jews go back to Jerusalem. The Jews kept Jerusalem as a city-state. Sixty-nine years after the start of the spoliation of the Papal States in 1860, Mussolini signed the Lateran Treaty with the Church. The treaty gave the new city-state of Vatican City to the Church. The Persians were eventually conquered by Alexander the Great, who reigned for 12 years. After his conquest, he died suddenly, and his empire was divided into four parts. Eventually, Antiochus IV Epiphanes, a Seleucid king, invaded the temple and persecuted the Jews horribly. Faithful Jews had to flee Jerusalem for the mountains. The Seleucids, like the rest of the Greek world, was conquered by the Romans, who united the whole ancient world under their rule and authority. Mussolini and the fascists were eventually conquered by the Allied nations, led by Franklin Roosevelt, who was president for 12 years. After World War II, Roosevelt died suddenly, and Germany was divided into four parts. Arguably, the Soviet communists infiltrated the Vatican and initiated Vatican II. 
faithful Catholics had to flee from the Novus Ordo Church in Rome and join with traditional Catholics in the Alps. The Soviet Union eventually collapsed in 1991 and its European territories were absorbed by the emerging European Union, which was formed in 1993. The European Union, like the Roman Empire, united all of Europe under its rule. Just like the Roman Empire united the, the Western Greek Ptolemaic Kingdom and the Eastern Greek Seleucid Kingdom under its rule and authority. The Romans, led by Titus, destroyed the city of Jerusalem in 70 AD. It appears that the Novus Ordo Church in Rome will likewise be destroyed during the reign of the European Union, during the time of Peter the Roman. There are many striking parallels between the two situations. There was a sizable Christian population in Jerusalem in 70 AD. However, not one Christian died when Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. This is because, prior to the siege of Jerusalem by the Romans, all the Christians left. They remembered the words of Christ who said in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed about with an army, then know that the desolation thereof is at hand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and those who are in the midst thereof depart out, and those who are in the countries not enter into it. Sometime between 66 and 70 AD, the Romans surrounded Jerusalem and were ready to lay siege. However, for some unexplained reason, the Romans abandoned the siege. The Christians in the city all took that opportunity to flee Jerusalem. When the Romans returned in 70 AD, all the Christians had fled the city, and only the Jews remained in the city. Similarly, in the book of the Apocalypse, God also calls his people out of the whore of Babylon. In chapter 18, verse 4, we read, And I heard another voice from heaven, saying, Go out from her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Thus, in both cases, God's people are called out of the great city before its destruction by the Romans. During the siege of Jerusalem by the Jews in 70 AD, the Jews inside the city were extremely divided, and they fought with each other fiercely. There was a great difference in ideology among the Jews trapped in Jerusalem. From Wikipedia, Despite early successes in repelling the Roman sieges, the Zealots fought amongst themselves, and they lacked proper leadership, resulting in poor discipline, training, and preparation for the battles that were to follow. At one point, they destroyed the food stocks in the city, a drastic measure thought to have been undertaken, perhaps, in order to enlist a merciful God's intervention on behalf of the besieged Jews. Currently, there is a great division among the adherents of the Novus Ordo, especially among the more conservatives. They are divided on how to handle the heresies of Francis, Peter the Roman. We suspect that this division will increase in intensity until the eventual destruction of Novus Ordo. The Jews in Jerusalem missed the coming of Christ but instead they rejected him, not knowing he was the fulfillment of prophecy. Consequently, the Jews were no longer God's chosen people, even though they themselves thought otherwise. They never thought that God would allow the complete destruction of the city and the temple, and the utter desolation of their people, since they were God's chosen people, and they thought they had his protection. They didn't realize that the religion was no longer pleasing to him. The Novus Ordos in Rome missed the coming of Antichrist and unknowingly accepted him, not knowing or seeing the fulfillment of prophecy. Consequently, the Novus Ordo Catholics 
are not God's chosen people, since their religion has been changed and is no longer Catholic. They think they have God's protection, and he would not allow the destruction of what they believe to be the Catholic Church, but instead is the Whore of Babylon. They don't realize that the Novus Ordo Rite and the heresies of Vatican II are not pleasing to God. There is still so much more that is not included in this video. We will endeavor to present the remaining information in future videos. We would just like to point out that this interpretation of the Whore of Babylon is distinctively Catholic. It exposes the Novus Ordo and points to the Tridentine Mass and the traditional Catholic faith. Since the Bible is really a Catholic book, it would make sense that possible meanings of the symbols in the Book of the Apocalypse directly relate to the traditional Catholic faith of the ages. Please stay tuned, for there is much more to come.